Joel, nice to have you here. Nice to nice to have you on the team as well. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I think what we usually do in these podcasts, we start with the very beginnings, not only in football but in life as in well. Life so, as well. Okay. So uh, you were born in Kinshasa in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yes. But you uh, you lived. Uh, and you grew up in France. In France, yeah. So what what happened? How did how how did the road from uh, Congo looked to 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 France? Uh, well, yes, I was born in Congo, like you like you said. Um, well, let's say it was not a great souvenir for me because it was in that moment civil war. Yeah, I had to escape with my family. It was a second. So yeah, 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 civil war in uh, in Congo. I still remember this this moment of my life. So we had to escape with my family. So we first went to Kenya. Uh, how old were you when you? Left I was like maybe five, six, five, ah, six years old. So it was six two thousand. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. something like this. Six years old. Went to Kenya for two, three years. And then after Kenya, then I went to to France. Mm, Paris. Cause, yeah, because uh, we talked before the interview. Because yeah. I was impressed by your English language skills. Yeah, yeah. It's not that common for a, a f- French person, a French to, person <laughs> to speak to me. Yeah, because French person usually speak very bad English. Sorry for my French guys. <laughs> yeah, but, but uh, I haven't I haven't talked to uh, to Jibril, who also speaks French, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I spoke to Go, and he speaks perfect English as well. Yeah, so. yeah. He he learned a lot. I, I guess he learned a lot. But uh, yeah. That's why I was living in Kenya. So in mm-hmm. Kenya, you know, they have Swahili. I speak yeah. Swahili also and English. So that's why I learned for three years uh, English. So when I went to France, it was more easy for me because I had this buzz, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, then I learned French in, in France. Because, you know, well, the, the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, I think, is the, like the most populous French-speaking country yes, in the yes, world. Yes, yes, so. yes, as well. Um, when I was in Congo, so we have been colonized by Belgian people. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I learned French there. So when I moved to Paris, I already knew French, so it was kind of... I two only two, three because of Kenya, Swahili, oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I Swahili. speak Swahili as well, and Congolese, of course, so okay. four. Uh, how old were you when you uh, arrived to France? I was eight, eight, eight years old. I was mm-hmm. eight years old when I arrived to France. So, uh, w- uh, what what did it look like when you arrived to France? Was it was it hard to accommodate? Which which city did you start living in? Well, w- I was living in uh, in Limoges before to go to to Paris. So, well, um, I remember the most difficult for me, I think, was the weather. It's not I think, it's I remember because. You know, we came from Africa where it was just hot and mm-hmm. uh, cold. We have just these two uh, two seasons, let's say. Mm-hmm. And coming to France, snowing, <gasps> minus five, minus six was horrible for me. Really, I couldn't get out of my house. I was every time so cold that I was not understanding what was happening. Uh-huh. It took me maybe two, three, four months to really get adapted to this. So it was so this weather. So that uh, Lithuanian weather that you experienced uh, like a couple of months ago when we had minus 20, it wasn't too good for you. No, the thing is that, you know, now after, you know, where I've been through uh, France, I lived a lot in mm-hmm. France. After I went, I played also in Riga, you know, I was in Macedonia. Yeah, yeah. So I get used to this weather. So when I came here, for me, it was OK. Just in the beginning, you know, from when you came really from Africa and you've never been in such a cold Mm-hmm. Places, it's <laughs> it's really something shocking. You know, you freezing. You can't do nothing. You can't even <laughs> think. You're just thinking about to go back home, somewhere warm. Yeah, I was I was talking to Eddie a couple of months ago or a month ago, and he was always complaining about this Lithuanian weather because it was this period when it was raining for a day. Then yeah, it was yeah, sunny. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but this let's say I love Lithuania, but this horrible about this country. I can wear, let's say, a street shirt, go to take a coffee, and after two minutes it will rain. This <laughs> happened to me this Sunday. I was like, waiting, waiting in my apartment, so sunny, sunny. Say, okay, I need to go for a uh-huh. walk, go take. I promise you, as soon as I took my coffee, just sat like this, it started raining. <laughs> I was like, damn. <laughs> okay. So, uh, when and where did you start playing football? When did you learn of football? Because it, it, it could have been very early, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, of course, uh, in Congo, I um, was playing in the street, you know, with my friends. But let's say in real school, school of football was in, uh, was in France. Mm-hmm. was in France. First, I was in a motor team when I was 9, 10 years old, mm-hmm. 11, 12. And then I've been de- detected by Toulouse. Mm-hmm. This, you know, Toulouse. Yeah, Toulouse is a of, big, yeah. big club. So I signed there for, um, for five years. So there I learned a lot about tactic, about football, about really a real school of to becoming professional. Mm-hmm. That's where the main part where I learned football. Mm-hmm. So for my 
14 years old until uh, I became professional. So uh, Toulouse, uh, was Toulouse far from, from the city that uh, your parents were living at the moment? Uh, yeah, it was like uh, 300 kilometers. Uh, uh, so, yes. so, so you, you had to, yeah, like, had to start move. living yeah, yeah, on, that's, on yourself? Yeah, that's why um, I used to tell my mom I needed to be a man uh, and uh, take care of myself very young, you know, because I went out of my parents' house when I was like 14, 15. I used mm -hmm. to live alone all my life. That's sometimes I tell my mom to manage my own things by myself. Okay, when I needed something, I called my mom, but she was far away from me. So mm -hmm. from 14 until now, let's say I used to live alone. So it's kind of a half, half, almost half, well, more ha than half of your life, something like yes, that. Yes, 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 true. And yeah. uh, but I learned a lot, I learned a lot in Toulouse. Uh -huh. but, you, but you didn't, didn't turn professional in Toulouse? No, I turned professional uh, in uh, Al Avignon mm -hmm. after. But, but what happened after Toulouse? Why did you, uh, why did I you had, leave um, the, the well, club? I had a four or five years contract and uh, that's things happen in football. In the last season of my contract, I, I broke, my, uh, broke my uncle. Mm -hmm. I broke my uncle and uh, my contract was uh, to end. And I had like seven, eight months out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it was more difficult, you know, when you play in a club, League One, Toulouse won League One, you have res results and to play. Now, so I had uh, offers from other clubs, so I wanted game time, you know, to come back uh, easily. So I went to to Al Avignon. I turned professional mm -hmm. there. And how how was it? You uh, your first professional game uh, was in uh, this uh, Al Avignon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing because I have souvenir now. My friends uh, played with uh, this uh, Ismail Benasser, who is playing in Milan. Uh -huh, okay. Milan. I play with him. Samuel Gigo is playing in uh, Spartak Moscow. Mm -hmm. This defender, and uh, I have maybe. I don't know, five, six, seven, eight players, ten were playing in top teams now and uh, I remember it very well. Yeah, it was a special moment. I was 19, 20 years old and I had like, the coach gave me like 15 minutes, 20 mm -hmm. minutes and it was, uh, it's indescribable. I can't uh, describe it. It was uh, amazing. You know, you work all your life for this moment. Uh, I still remember it perfectly. I think my mom still have the video. It was, I was so, so proud, so happy. It so uh, was something amazing. Were your uh, mom or your, or your parents or your relatives uh, in the game? Were you? Yes, of course. Game? She she was like a 300. I remember this day well because you know she was like at home and every. I used to be in the group, you know, to for the game like six, mm -hmm. seven times, but I never really entered, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, this game, I think we were winning like two one, three one, and uh, we were warming up and had few professionals there, you know, and so. But the coach looked at me and said, you're going to enter. And I remember thinking, me, me. <laughs> and uh, the other guy was making me jokes, you know, they're like, they're like, no, 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 he didn't say you. So, you know, I was keeping, and the coach called me, Joel. And I said, me? He said, yes, come. <laughs> so I came and uh, yeah, my mom was just the first person I saw. To, I, I could listen to her voice telling me, come on, son. <laughs> I turned up and tell her to keep calm because <laughs> people were looking at her. You know, my mom, she, she was like shouting, ah, Joel, it's my son, it's my son. <laughs> well, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> it's a very exciting moment yeah, for her know, as, well. Know, as well. As well, but I was like, come on, mom, please. <laughs> and everybody I was seeing was laughing around. But it was, yeah, it was a fantastic moment. When I entered the pit, it's two, three minutes, you know, with your heart's beating because mm -hmm. of passion and you understood that you've been sacrificing all your life for this moment and that's what yeah, you all, want to all, do. All that like living all alone. All that living alone well, I, I really made sense in this moment because if I had to exchange it again, I, I would not exchange it. Mm -hmm. But you but you didn't stay too long in uh, this club. Yeah, it's because uh, the club, after they had a um, financial problem, so they uh, went down yeah. for a financial problem. I had my contract three years. But then uh, the next year they, they went down for a financial problem. So they tried to fix it, they tried to fix it, but the end, we started season, that was difficult because we started season and after three, four months, they had the financial problem, mm -hmm. they had to go down. So we had to quickly found something, uh, something else. So where, where did, you, uh, did you go then? I go to Epinal, it was in national. Mm -hmm. in, uh -huh third league in, in French. So uh, what what was it like? I think it was, uh, you played quite a lot in that one. Yeah, yeah, I played like, I don't know, 25, 25 games, scored, assist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it was a good uh, good experience. It's for me, you know, like uh, as a man, you know, mm -hmm. French third league is very tough, you know, very, yeah, yeah, sometimes I was playing, playing sometimes even more hard than second league or first league, you know, because Depend of which aspect, physically or tactically or mentally. Because I think, like, uh, well, I, I have this uh, this uh, thing that I think in 
and some of the lower leagues they rely more on like uh, physicality yeah, yeah, and yeah. less technique less technique let's say and that was really really tough i was like thinking maybe you know that was my mistake okay i come from second first league so the league is going to be not easy but you know but it was tough really it's mm-hmm. more tough i mean physically than okay the game not so technically like second league or first league but it was tough physically really tough and uh, taught me a lot how to build myself, I mean, as a man, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I learned a lot from that I, I club. Could, b- because you were still very young. I was like, still very young, I was, what, 19, 20 years old, so, well, for me it was... Because I think for, for the young players, the most important thing is to, like, play. To play, not, that was the main thing. Not to be in some that, to be great, in some club, on great club on the bench. Because, let's say, I'm in Milan, but okay, of course you were still training, but if you don't play for one year or two years, it doesn't change anything. And what was after that? Was it uh, Calais? Yeah, it was Calais. And how, how did the season for, for that team go? Uh, the season went well. Again, we had the, the club had some uh, financial uh, financial problems. Coincidence? Coincidence, I don't know. <laughs> maybe I was thinking it's me, you know. Maybe, God maybe was saying you, yeah. just stop. <laughs> no, no, it's like that. It's life, you know. I'm, I'm somebody who believes a lot in God. And I think that nothing happened for, for nothing. Mm-hmm. There is always a reason. So, And I always say to myself that God gives me these things because he knows that I can handle it. That's how I think other people will think, yeah, they black, they're the black cats. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. But me, no, I think that he gives me these things because he knows I can handle it, you know. I've been through a lot of things in my life. So for me, until I didn't, I don't decide that it's over, it's never over. Yeah. I work like this in any part of my life for girlfriends, for maybe I should not, but <laughs> <laughs> but that's a that's a kind of that's a, a kind of my great, great mentality. It's I think, my to mentality. Have. Even in trainings, my my teammates, uh, I hate to lose. I hate to okay until I didn't say it's stop, it's finished. You never, I never lose. Okay, it's like that. So yeah, uh, Calais uh, folded. So you have to leave. You have to find a new club. So what did you do after after that? After Calais, yeah, I had opportunities, you know, to go in uh, to go in Bulgaria. I have uh-huh. a Slavia, Slavia Sofia, I remember? Mm-hmm. And then we went there and you know how it is with this age and everything. And so I couldn't sign there, couldn't sign there. So finally I ended uh, in Macedonia, mm-hmm. I remember, Skopje. Oh, uh, nice club, nice coach. I learned a lot from them. I stayed, uh, played six months. Mm-hmm. And after six months, uh, Rabotnishki, oh, a great yeah, club there. Let, let's go back yeah. a little bit to, to Skopje. Uh, yeah. What was the, it was your first, uh, like, Overseas experience, not playing uh, yeah, yeah, out yeah. of France. So what what was that like? Because it's it's quite <laughs> far have, away. It's a very different anecdote. country. Oh my God, it was so crazy. I have this uh-huh. anecdote of Skopje. Yeah, I don't know if I should say it, but uh, yeah, let's yeah, let's be please, crazy. Please <laughs> uh, you know, I was uh, <laughs> I was with uh, one Brazilian guy, mm-hmm. and uh, this agent bring us. You know, so we were like, okay, we came. We met the coach. We went in a in a restaurant. We were eating, so the coach wasn't speaking. You know. English, so had some one mm-hmm. guy to, to translate and everything, and and the coach came and looked at us and he said he didn't know us, you know. Really, he asked me which position you play. I said <laughs> okay. yeah, back wing. He asked this Brazilian. He said, okay, come for training. We came for one training, and after one training, they decided to sign us. Like really, after one hour and a half, <laughs> they decided to sign us. For me, it was. I was thinking, okay, all this coach is very smart, very clever. He mm-hmm. understands quickly football. Or, you know, they're like, okay, <laughs> this guy's playing French and okay, let's sign them <laughs> that, quickly. That's good enough. <laughs> no, but you see how, how life is. And after talking with the coach, knowing who he was, I, I knew that he played in CSKA, he played in big teams, and he was all the season, he and was understanding football perfectly. Mm. But I can tell you that somebody, a coach who really knows football, for a player, let's say after 30 minutes, he knows the level that he has really. Of course, you can always progress all this, but he see the potential and he see mm-hmm. your ability, quality very, very, very quickly. And those those first six months uh, in Macedonia were quite good for you because uh, I checked that you you arrived in I think it was February mm-hmm. or something, yeah. and then you started all the games mm-hmm. and you played ninety minutes in all of them, like yeah, no yeah. no substitutions, no benches, no. Uh, anything. Yeah, I have one anecdote also about this. I I would like sometimes you know to just rest, <laughs> to rest. Or, because I remember I had injury, but uh, then the I remember. One time in dressing room, and tell the coach, hey coach, you know, I feel a little pain here. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know if he was joking at serious and he looked at me and, um, you know, uh, this guy who helped us to put clothes, you know, to wash ah, clothes. the kit, kit man. The kit man. And he, he, in a serious way, but with this joke, you know, and he told me, 
okay, okay, you, you don't want to play, so you want me to put the kit man in your place. <laughs> and you know he wasn't laughing, so I didn't know if it was a joke <laughs> or not. So I was like, <laughs> uh, and he was like, no, no, you're going to play. <laughs> he said, okay, if really, really you can't. But he looked at me and said, I know you can manage this. And you know, he learned me a lot of things about this, about that, the fact that for football players, you know, we have, let's say, 36 games in a season. Mm -hmm. We never play them all 100%, I mean, physically. Mm -hmm. But I think all is mentally. And I started to realize and to understand how important was the mental for a football player. Because that time I was thinking I was injured. If it was just up to me, I would say, OK, maybe I can rest one too much because I feel I have injury. And uh, no, he told me that you need to play with pain. Life is like that, mm -hmm. such a thing. And, I played all the season and this game I remember playing even very well, just anticipating, thinking that, okay, I have this pain. Maybe I'm not going to run like I like to run. Mm -hmm. Maybe I will think a little bit to think, to think. He learned me a lot of things. Say yeah. thanks to him. But that also, also like very fits well with your mentality. Yeah, yeah, before, yeah, of like course. There are other players. It's over when can, I say You can over. tell them if they have pain here and they, they will tell you they're not playing. Me, really, it's really hard. Even whatever I'll have. If I can play, if there's still a 1% of chance, I will, I will risk it. I'm like that. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, when you played for uh, Skopje, mm -hmm. uh, you scored f in the second game for the club. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. How, what, what was it like? What, what, were, what were the fans saying? How were they reacting? They were happy. They were happy. Well, me too. But I remember this game because after, I don't know, uh, 20 minutes starts snowing, you know, okay. for my, oh, it was, my it was first February. game. February, yeah, yeah, and February snowing, and it was my first game on snow. But I didn't care, I was so happy to be there, you know, I didn't mm -hmm. play since a long time, and I wanted so much to score, and just went and scored. I was very happy, I remember going on the bench, hugging everybody, and, uh, you know, you need this to score as a player. As, okay, I'm a defensive player, all this, mm -hmm. but I used to tell people, you well, feel more comfortable, you like to score, you play football to score goals also. Of course, I like to defend, but I would lie if I say I don't want to score all this. But sometimes, you know, you have to put the team in front. You have to care yeah. more about the and team than yourself. I've read your interviews and I talked to some uh, some coaches that uh, were coaching against you. Yeah, yeah. And they said that you are very attack-minded yeah, as well. I'm very attack-minded <laughs> as well. But sometimes, you know, particularly here in Jalgis, sometimes I have to think, you know, for a season, I was seeing that in defense we are not doing well, so I have to reflect on myself saying, okay, maybe I should let's go in attack, first secure, the most important is the team to win. Mm -hmm. And I have to, to think like this, it's very important. I don't only have to think about me, that I need to score, that I need to assist. First, we need to win. And I believe that coming in first place, all this, I will get my opportunity to score. And to, it's not something who, that I'm saying, I must score. No, the team must win, and then I, after I will score. If you score, score that's, that's... If I score, it's okay, it's a bonus. but. So yeah, uh, I think the, I, I can say that that those six months in Skopje uh, worked very well because uh, you were uh, acquired. You went to another. Yeah, uh, I went club to another to who was playing Europa League. Robotnicki yeah, was playing Europa League. Yeah, and it's like top three, I think. Top three uh, club, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, well, what do you remember about that transfer? How how did it come to be? Uh, well, I had opportunities even to go back to France, but you know, in a second league or really, let's say, a club who's playing nothing, you know, and the mm -hmm. motivation, ambition, just transfer by agent or this Robotnitschke. I remember the president, before I fly, I had my fly like two, three days, and mm -hmm. he called me and my agent and say, we, we sat in a restaurant and he explained to me that, listen, this Robotnitschke, okay, it's not in France, all this, but if you play well here, we're playing in Europa League, the coach wants you absolutely and he believes in you and he's going to put, and the, he explained to me that the coach i was playing left back very mm -hmm. interesting and the coach wanted to put me wing because yeah, i can also yeah. play wing and i say why and the coach came after five minutes he explained to me that okay you defend well and all this thing but you have a, a fantastic i mean create you're a creative player really creative player and you need to understand this about your career you can defend very well but with the ball you are so good, so I will put you all the season in wing. I said, but coach, all the season I played left back. He said, no, believe me, in wing you will see, you'll be better. And I remember he put me in wing and I had a, a great season, really, after six months after I'd been transferred mm -hmm. to Riga. No, it was a... So uh, just after you arrived, it, it didn't take too long uh, before uh, you played uh, in Europe. In Europe, yeah. We it, played was, it was Honved. Uh, Budapest, Honved, yeah. I so uh, what do you remember about those uh, those two games? Yeah, I remember that was we were everybody very excited. My first uh, Europe. Mm -hmm. European, European game. So tournaments I wanted was so I wanted to play. You know, I wanted to confront myself, and we were like, uh, wow, we want to play this game? I think we drove there at home one one. 
it was 2-1. 2-1, 2-1. We won at home 2-1 we won at home two one and uh, yeah, yeah, two one. Two one and it was wow, what a feeling. We were so happy. So every player, you know, like uh, giving their maximum and I remember one week before two weeks we were working a lot and you can mm -hmm. see the motivation in dressing room. And then we went there in Homeford <laughs> and I have one anecdote for about this because it was crazy. I, I remember coming in um, for breakfast. And usually I take my milk, everybody, you know, you're just... And that moment, I don't know why, but coach decided that we can't drink milk, we can't drink things with, you know, because he was thinking, he was telling us that happened to him, that they can tell one server to put something, you know, so the players, I swear, <laughs> I was thinking it's a joke, you know. Uh -huh. And I asked my teammates and they say, no, coach really said that. So I remember couldn't take my milk, nothing. I was like, okay, maybe it's true, you know. And we went to play, we went to play, and it was horrible. I mean, uh, we made uh, the team, we made a few mistakes, our center difference, so we take 4-0 there. Yeah. Oh, it was horrible because we had this 2-1, and uh, I remember telling my teammates, it's football, you know, you can win 2-1 here, and still, we saw, you see the quality of the, the players, you know, you can understand football. Sometimes you can win 2-3-0, but still know that your opponent is strong. You don't underestimate yourself, but you know that your opponent yeah. is strong. So I was telling them, guys, we won 2-1, but be careful, be careful. And we went there after five minutes, I don't know, central defender made a mistake, one, two, we right back, take red card. <gasps> it was a mess, oh my God. But I didn't, didn't still fight until the end, but I was like, damn, we wasted chance. We could have passed at least one round, second yeah, round yeah. to see, you know? But with the best, that was a nice city. But were, were, were you disappointed in that, in that loss and not progressing? Uh... I was so much disappointed because for me it was a, such an opportunity, you know, I was like, I remember, you know me, when I lose, even in training, even here, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I know I try to change this for myself, but I can't, you know, I'm so sad. I'm so sad. I don't want to speak to nobody, really. Mm -hmm. I feel so bad. So even, even losing in training, let you, to you to understand, if I lose, I, I'm playing ping pong with somebody uh -huh. and I lose, it's really inside of me, even against my sister. I become so sad, so mad. I don't know why, really. I hate to lose. It's, I don't know from where it's come, really. I like to be competitive. Sometimes I want to really tell myself, calm down, but I can't. I feel so bad when I lose and losing that when you win 2-1 and you have the opportunity for your life, it was for me devastating really was. I remember we had pizza uh, after <laughs> after the game and this guy bringing me jelly or pizza and I just looked at him like this and he said, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> and I didn't eat, I couldn't eat. I was like, how, how come? Yeah, you, you mentioned ping, ping pong. Uh, do you play with the guys from Jalgiris? No, I didn't play against them already. I know they are very good players. We will yeah, play. Yeah, we'll especially play. I, th I think I've, I've heard a, ro a lot of good things about Francis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that he's a very good player. Well, Eddie said that he's way better. I saw, I saw, I saw them playing. I think they are good players, but off, oh, you know, <laughs> yeah, what they think and they need to confront themselves to a nice, a good player. We will play. <laughs> we will play. We will see. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, let's go. Let's go back to your career. But yeah. You spent only half a season in yeah, yeah. Benchkip. So wh why? Why did you leave after? I well, think it was six everything. Or seven yeah, months? everything. Everything was going was going well. And after and after six months, you know, my agent found that we had this interest. You know, for Riga. Ah, okay. Riga was interest. So yeah, and in Rabonishki, you know, we had like we lost in the cup, and had a new coach, and for me this opportunity came, and it was like Riga playing the Champions League, was the one the the cup and the, the championship last year mm -hmm. and I was like so excited so interested to go play and even though I didn't know uh, uh, Latvia mm -hmm. then for me it was such an opportunity you know and uh, yeah, I accepted so what what was it like when you I don't know landed or drove or rode to uh, Latvia what was it like because it was Latvia in February which is not the best looking country at God that made time the, of year. God made my way well because uh, they were in Dubai and I ah, fly okay. direct to Dubai. I came, we played against Gansu, this mm -hmm. Chinese team, one friendly game. And after that, um, I signed everything. We spent maybe one, two weeks there. And for me, it was perfect. We came back, yeah, true. And, and, and that time was not snowing, nothing. Mm -hmm. We just trained two, three training and then we fly to Papua. This about trigger, you know, when it's like in February, they're not in uh, Latvia, mm -hmm. players always in Dubai or in some Emirate country, yeah. so don't feel the cold. Just coming before the championship, let's say in March, so they, they can play. So that's yeah. why I didn't really... Because uh, I think uh, Riga is one of the few uh, clubs in, like in these Baltic states mm -hmm. that 
can afford like these uh, trips yeah, to, yeah, to yeah, Dubai yeah. and, and yeah, training, yeah, yeah. So. I remember telling my mom, oh, you know, I don't know about this country, but uh, I think this club <laughs> is very good because, you know, now we're in Dubai and all this and uh, the staff, very professional players. And I saw what, to be honest, I was amazed by the quality, you know, of players because mm -hmm. as a professional football player, of course, and sometimes you go in a team, you can see, you know, set the level. And there I didn't know about Lazio, but when I went, I saw all this quality that I understood that they were taking players for, we had an amazing squad. Mm -hmm. And just like here, you know, taking players, just like you're doing a selection, you know, from each country, the best in yeah, their and positions and were very strong. Team. And I think that the squad was kind of a deep, deep, deep one. Deep, so, deep, deep. So. I remember in each post, we were two or three and not two or three who can play in the bench, like who can play, like we were changing every week and mm -hmm. still winning 4-0, 4-0. <laughs> So what, what was uh, Virisliga for you, like the, the Latvian highest league? Was, was it different from uh, Macedonia or other leagues uh, that you played before? Uh, yeah, it was different for Ukrainian, because it's for Ukrainian. You can compare it to Ukrainian and French, was, mm -hmm. it was different, you know, from the pitch first, because you used to play in big stadium, you know. In, now, when we started, especially playing in synthetic, small pitches, mm -hmm. more tough, more fight, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, great quality, great quality of, of teams. And, and you, you won the league. Yeah, we won the league. Was, was it the first? Uh, my first, first uh, champion. My title? first champion. Yeah. yeah. So what was, was uh, that like? So it must have been a special. It was occasion. special. It was special. It was special because <laughs> through this season, a lot of things happened to me. A lot of anecdotes. A lot of a lot of things. And at the end, we finished champion, and it was something just unbelievable. It was amazing. And also, while playing for uh, FC Riga, mm -hmm. it was your first time in. Champions League, yeah. although it was only like qualifying, but yeah, we, we're, but we're used to that in these parts of, of the, of yeah, the I world. Understand that. So what what was it like to to play in the Champions League? I think you I think you start. I start both games. Both games. Yeah. So uh, what was it like to play against Dundalk? Uh, I think they even they also the fans, in qualifying they also play the 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 tune Champions League. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what was it like to hear was, that? Was uh, was amazing. I remember playing in championship like Riga we had a very big squad you know mm -hmm. deep so it's true that with the quality of player you were not sure you know to play but in this time you know in two three months uh, before the championship I was really in great form playing all the games mm -hmm. and being very good on the on the pitch so like coach talked to me before I knew that I was going to play when EuroLeague will come mm -hmm. so we went there and um, the morning when we arrived with the bus, the fans didn't have fans, you know, there were a lot already, you know, I was thinking, okay, maybe in the game there will be, uh -huh. but on our road to the hotel, there already were, the fans were a lot, I was uh, impressed, it was amazing. And entering in the game, I think was maybe 15, 20,000 uh, around the stand, this first game was something, I understood in that moment that there is two type of football, with mm -hmm. fans and without, because really I told them, when the game started, when we were playing and after 50, 60, I wasn't feeling tired. It was like, you know, people were with you. It's something incredible. I can't describe mm -hmm. it. It's something else to play with fans and to play with a lot of people in a stadium yeah, than yeah. an empty stadium. It's something unbelievable. And this adrenaline you have because it's Champions League, you know, you don't want to lose. You don't want to know. It was amazing, amazing but souvenir. Unfortunately, you did lose and in a very dramatic fashion oh, after yeah. penalties. Penalty, or oh, this penalty can get used to it. Yeah, but uh, I think you were uh, already off the field. Yes, the yes, yes, so, yes. Uh, uh, would you have taken a penalty if you were on the field? Yeah, of, of course, of, of course. course, I would have. <laughs> I would like even here, I had, but unfortunately I couldn't. I was, uh, had some cramp and uh -huh. told the coach, but yes, yes, I would like to take my responsibility. So, so what was it like to, I, I know it's, it's kind of painful for you. Yeah, but even yeah. now talking about it is painful, <laughs> but oh, no, it's the past. Now we can talk about uh -huh. it. If something happened, um, well, drawing, uh, I mean, at the end, when the, the ref whistle it was for us such a good, because if I remember well, Erdi took a red card and we were playing 10s against 11 and just wanted to go draw so yeah, we can go yeah. to the penalty. And then starting, you know, you are, you understand how stressful can be that really in that moment. I wish it to nobody because your your heart's beating so fast, and you were just wishing the opponent to to <laughs> fail to to miss one, and then you start missing one. Two, our keeper saved, and then these guys scored. They scored. They scored, and they went to, and it was horrible. horrible and and the second second one was an away game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was at home, was at home. Ah, we played home. We play away, the first, away uh -huh. there, and then uh, was at home. So that's, well, 
it's it took, very unfortunate. Unfortunately, yeah, it took be something front amazing in front of our fans. They had a lot of people in for the first time you know, in Riga uh -huh. because usually in Riga in that stadium you have nobody. And I remember that time was, wow, the stadium was full and this fans of Tundalk was football atmosphere, you know, mm -hmm. something that you're looking for. You're playing for these moments, for these people. For, yeah, and we lost in front of our fans was really disappointing. Yeah, but you, st you still won the, <laughs> the championship. Yes, as I told you, I had this mentality. I mean, well, in your group of champions like this, even like here, we, it's part of our life. We need to be used to this. Even if we lose today, mm -hmm. tomorrow we can, you know, it's already forgot. Yeah. So that's why. And you actually, uh, I went through the, the squads of, of the teams uh, that you played with, like the players that you mm -hmm. played with. You played with one guy who was who played for Shalgiris and was very loved and liked here. Uh, that was Kamil Bilinski. Bilinski, he, ah. Uh, do played. you remember him? What, yeah, what was yeah, your yeah. impression about him? Because he's very loved here. He, he scored a lot of goals. A lot of goals. Yeah. Yeah. Kamil was, uh, was somebody, somebody really special. I, I liked him. I liked him a lot. He fantastic uh, goal scorer, really. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> He have this ability of left, right, and you know, have this thing, like I say, yeah, striker and goalkeeper, for me, it's another job. Mm -hmm. I don't know if people will agree with me, okay, the football player, but it's another job, because you need to feel it, you know, he was feeling the goals. Mm -hmm. He was feeling the goal. We can say, sometimes we look at statistics, oh, how much you run, all this, but I could tell you that in a game, maybe Camille will, I will run 12 kilometers, but he will run five. Mm -hmm. But he will be in that place, you center, and he will score the goal. I remember how important he was in the Europa Cup. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he come after five minutes and he scored this goal and he scored and he scored. He's always where he needs to be to score. And that was amazing about him. And he didn't like to, to lose, just like me. And I remember after every training, he was trying to correct, saying, no, I didn't like this. I was looking at him, no, I don't like this. No, maybe in here I needed. And he knew, I remember one anecdote was very funny because I don't know, I was speaking with someone and he can listen to a conversation and I would say, ah, what is this player? He played Manchester and he will come and tell me the name. I said another name and he, he know everything about so every he's, player, he's about very their into life, football. <laughs> into football. You know, he knows everything and we, I was laughing at him sometimes, say he's spying, you know, maybe <laughs> he's spying all the players. He knew everything. He could tell me where I come from, where I played and uh -huh. that was amazing. He's really into football, really. Ah, okay. So very, great, great very experience cool. with him. Uh, so uh, you left Riga. Mm, also, after half a season, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, after no, no, one. after the end of the season. Riga FC, we because we start in March, like here, oh, in yes, December, yes. January, <laughs> and so after the end of the season, that yeah, we after went, the uh, end of the season, you played one full season, one became full a champion, season, and became a champion, and you went to uh, Ukraine. Ukraine, so yeah. So, yeah. what do you remember the the transfer? What did it look like, and how did you learn that you're? Uh, uh, going it's to looking like uh, uh, I had uh, this opportunity to prolongation, but with some conditions, you know, mm -hmm. from Riga. And then uh, I was like, okay, finally with my agent, we didn't accept them because I wasn't founding this after. It's personal, I didn't founding it fair, mm -hmm. but I was still in love with the club, respect, all they did for me. And I had this opportunity to go in Ukraine, my agent told. So um, I went, I went first to see the team, like two, three days, and uh, for me, it's sounding well. Had these Brazilian guys and Ukrainian guys. I ended up very quick with the team. Came mm -hmm. back to France, and then I uh, went back when uh, the half season was starting mm -hmm. for preparation in Antalya mm -hmm. with the team. So, what was the Ukrainian league for you? You said that it, 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 it's a bit similar to the Latvian league that you. No, know. no, no. I say just uh, the comparison. I, I'm com if I compare uh, Ukrainian to Latvia, this that's how I can see the big difference. You ah, know? Okay. If I compare so, Latvia to Lithuania. Uh, it's okay, like similar league, but Ukrainian was such a different because the Ukrainian league is really, pro, I mean, like really, really tough and really mm. professional. More near the French league, like really. Did you did you play against all those uh, big Ukrainian clubs? Yeah, 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 I played against Zoya. I didn't <laughs> I played against Shakhtar, I think, but yeah, there's a lot of big, big clubs and it was tough, tough games and really found the level of, of France. Like even first league, some teams were amazing, mm -hmm. amazingly strong. Yeah, so after... Uh, you, you played a lot, but you didn't stay there. No, I played a lot, but I didn't stay. I had contract, I think, one year, one plus one. I had two uh -huh. years contract. And you know, these things happened. The uh, president wanted to sell me. Uh, me uh, didn't want to go somewhere. And then uh, go to went to holiday. What had the um, disagreement, you know, with the, with the club. But mm -hmm. after it's personal decision, you know, just I was home and couldn't make it back to them. So we decided just after 
one two months to to just uh, to just finish. You know, I, I wanted to play. I just wanted to get out of this. So at a point, I said, okay, if we don't found an agreement, let's just finish like this. You know. So I decided to. And you and you came back to uh, to France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But After you signed for what? What was the name of the team? Uh, Cane, Cane. Cane. Uh, yeah. But it's it's it was a fourth tier. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. wasn't that? I, I might sound rude, but wasn't that a step back in your career? Or? No, let's say because well, I did this choice because uh, first I just wanted to play quickly. You know, mm -hmm. I could have let's say wait to go in second league, do some trial, go in second league. And the thing is that. Wasn't uh, didn't want to first to stay in France, you know, to mm -hmm. play in France because I know I wanted to go back in Ukraine or in Turkey or in high proposition. But the thing is that I wanted when I finished my contract, I wanted to play. I didn't know first that I'm going to finish my contract. I just decided after let's say season started after one week, I said okay, I'm going to leave this. I just wanted to mm -hmm. go back play football. I needed something and. Uh, I finished my contract, I had this opportunity because they were still playing, so I was like, I'm going to play there, let's say, from November, December, just these two months, so I didn't want to make it in a, mm -hmm. any other better team, let's say, because after I know in January that I'm going to be transferred, you know, because I had a proposition. So, after two months, finally we had COVID, so they couldn't play, I didn't make a, even yeah, any it, game it there. Was all the, I think, lower leagues were yeah, stopped. Yeah, yeah, all lower league was stopped, so I didn't make any game. was really my plan, like, to stay in fit. I didn't, like, mm -hmm. stay home three months and wait January. So I wanted to play. That's why I signed it there to play. But finally, I couldn't even play. So I was keep training, and then after in January, I came here. But, uh, yeah, but I think Jalgiris wasn't the first team that you uh, were kind of trying to sign on after, after that. Because I think you had a trial in Bulgaria as well. Or, I was, uh, or you were talking to, to a club in Bulgaria as well? My we agent talking to a club in Bulgaria, Lokomotiv Lokomotiv Plovdiv. Lokomotiv Plovdiv yeah. was always almost done, everything was okay. But after, you know, he talked with my agent, you know, some things happened and they knew talking about salaries, if player had mm -hmm. salary, you know. And I've been through these things, you know, I just wanted a project, something serious. For me, when I say go, I hear good echo. This is what I wanted to hear, mm -hmm. good echoes about the club. Call players, call players, tell me, yes, you can trust this club because I'm 26 now, I wanted something in my career. Just not go in a club, I have to figure out that no, there is maybe some... After I would just blame myself because I just mm -hmm. needed to ask. So yeah, that's how decision came. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you remember when you were uh, first offered to play for Jalgiris? Uh, or when your, I don't know, when your agent mentioned that there is this club in Lithuania that's interested in you, do you remember that? Yeah, 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 I remember I was at did, did you Did you know anything about the club before to, that? To be honest, when I was in Riga, uh, because you know, you have this application on your phone. So, yeah, yeah. Latvia, Lithuania, you are near. Oh, yeah, it, and sometimes, you know, you I, ju I just like to click to see who is in the best mm -hmm. position in the club. I remember a lot of time looking this Jalgiri thing, you know, I, but I didn't know nothing, uh, you know, about you. And remember maybe a few highlights in YouTube, because sometimes, you know, you click and you see. Mm -hmm. I saw maybe some few, but really I didn't know nothing special about uh, about this club then when my agent tell me this of course i start to search mm -hmm. start to ask i had friends also who played like you say the camille and then i uh, have this simkovic simkovic played here yeah, yeah simkovic yeah. i played here against rfs uh, by the way i saw him when i was uh, I went in riga i saw him and he told me uh, it was mm -hmm. a nice club here good so that's how i remember agents sending me message that this club was interested was I interested to come here Naspa, after I spoke to, to Vilma? Mm -hmm. And really, I think that's made a big, big, big difference, you know, to feel the trust, to feel the... Like somebody telling you a project, you know, in life, this is what you need. Okay, mm -hmm. sometimes I like, you know, to... But I need this in my life. Somebody explaining you why you're coming here, how they're going to support you, if it's gonna, when it's going to be hard, and nobody promised you that it's going to be easy. Like, you want a way, you know, we are going yeah. here to here. You just don't want to tell you, okay, come without project. They don't want to win nothing. They don't tell you about... She was like, kind of, she knows what she wants. You know, like, I want to win this, I want to win this. You come here for this, for your career, for the club. And after this, I just said, I said, yes, of course. This project is very interesting to me. And uh, you won the league. Of course, it's a serious team. Yeah, yeah. It was and really, it's also the Champions this, League. The Champions once League again. once again. And this, just thinking of this was, wow, again, uh, this opportunity to play Champions League in this, in this great team. Yeah, yeah. It was quite, so yeah, you, you arrived to Vilnius on uh, 1st of February, so it just uh, 
I don't know, five months ago or so. Yeah, uh, what, damn, time's flying so fast. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what, uh, what did Vilnius look like to you when you arrived here? Well, to be honest, when I arrived, it was snowing uh -huh. and really I couldn't even see the town. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, where did I land it on? I was in a green hotel, uh -huh. yeah. stayed maybe 20 days there. But, you know, just the fact knowing that I will play football, that was such a good feeling. And then mm -hmm. after, it's true that I came, see the team playing in uh, their first friendly game, mm -hmm. for a second, I don't remember which one was it. And I had this, you know, this thing when you go meet someone for the first time, you feel this thing, you know, this, uh, I remember they won and I came in the dressing room, spoke naturally, you know, to everybody, mm -hmm. congratulations, hey guys, congratulations. And they also asked me, hey, where are you from? You're going to play and something quickly went through, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you understand that you Some, will be good. Clicked, yeah, yeah, maybe? clicked and you understand that you will be good here, you will feel like at home. And the coach as well, and Vilma spoke to her. We spent mm -hmm. 20 minutes before the game. She explained me, just I had one idea when I came here and she told me, she just explained to me exactly what I wanted to, to hear. So I was like, yeah, I came in the, in the right place when uh, the sun and weather will be better, I will get to know the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's, what's your impression uh, on, the, on the league and on the season so far? On the league, let's like say it's uh, similar to Vesca Liga, to regular so yeah, Latvian. Latvian, pretty similar. I mean, for the pitch, for the intensity of the game, uh, what 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 I can say, um, yeah, we have this entity. You can hear fans, real mm -hmm. fans, a lot of fans. Yeah, this um, this changed me a lot here in uh, Vilnius. You have this real group of fans who come. Yeah. I have every game everywhere, and for that, you know, I have such a big respect. And every game when you are away. Just tell, I tell my teammates, like, well, guys, for the fans, you know, we, we can just, every game we need to be 100%. These guys do two, three hundred kilometers sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To come to see us, I mean, it's, can you imagine, it's all their life for these people. So, yeah, yeah that's the, maybe the big change in Riga. Don't remember such a far that fan will come. Like this very loyal a very group. very loyal group and a lot, you know, and uh, something really touched me. So, but yeah, the, the season, it, it could be better. <laughs> yeah, and to speak about the season, yeah, it's true that, as I told you, you know, we, such things happen in life. You see this team, uh, Manavish, that mm -hmm. we beat twice and we lost again them in the cup. Yeah, yeah <gasps> super Can you imagine, I told you that I hate losing, even in ping pong, losing that was, uh, yeah, was the worst moment. It was the moment because, of course, as a man, first, mm -hmm have to reflect on yourself, on your game, and before to thinking, you know, even about the club, like, damn, what could I do better? How did we lose this opportunity? And then uh, we have to switch to click quickly because we're mm -hmm. representing a club. So it, it has to, to be like this. It has been like this. Maybe I always take things in positive, like, okay, we did this, we lost this, and now it's past. Uh, we can't bring it back, you know? So, but it must be a lesson for us. A big, big lesson that mm -hmm. we understand that every opponent we need to take them very, very seriously, and nothing is given. You can play against the lowest one, and it, it's very interesting. You know, I like, I really like this contrast because we played in Danava. I remember when we start season, we draw. We mm -hmm. played in this uh, uh, cup game, we we lost against this team, and this team we're playing them now. We are all beating them and beating five zero Danava. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What changed it? The mentality, the progression of the team, and that's something really. I I would not say I would have. Prefer, you know, to, to lose this cup, but it's learned us a lot. It's learned us a lot as a man, as a team, and as growing for this big competition or coming and such important for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's well, we can only hope that the season gets better and yeah, we'll yeah, get it will get like better, like second uh, league title. <laughs> oh, yes, this whole hard for this and this is my main, main, main task. And we were, we were just talking before the interview and you said it's, uh, it's no chance that you can't stay serious for, for an hour or so. But you were kind of serious during the No, I uh, know, but when I say this, of course, I'm joking. I'm a very serious person, my friends know. Uh, but okay, let, we... No, we, but I'm a joke. You know, I, I like to I have this... Uh, how can I say? This, uh, we say this in French, this easy joke, is my life. Mm -hmm. I can't, you know, be every time so serious, every time sad. I say, let's say if I even argue with someone, we'll say with my teammate, we can argue because I have this strong character. It's true. Mm -hmm. We will argue or in a game, let's say after two minutes, we'll fight a little bit. But after four minutes, five, I will forgive, you know, there's something more important, you know, in life. Just to yeah. be sad and to argue for nothing. You can be upset about the situation, about the fact of losing a game, but you need to switch off. 
there are people who are dying around the world all this year just playing football come on man you need to enjoy your life <laughs> but talking about enjoying the life uh, I got this uh, some kind of a uh, I'd say there was some kind of uh, information from inside the team mm -hmm. that, that you uh, in some kind of questionnaire you put that uh, if you weren't a football player you would be a singer and a dancer <laughs> <laughs> is that true <laughs> where does that come from <laughs> I knew I should have not answered this question <laughs> I was like come on nobody's gonna look at this uh, I did I you did, did? <laughs> ah damn then you do you doing well your job bravo bravo uh, where does come from uh, when I was kid I wanted to become a professional football player Mm -hmm. Dancer or actor, really? Mm -hmm. Artistic and artistic. Yeah. yeah. And um, I'm passionate by dance, by music. I like a lot. I mean, I wake up with music, I sleep with music all the time. Music's what, playing in my what, head. What kind of music do you listen? Uh, every type, really every type of music. You know, I listen to Russian songs, like French, like Spanish, like mm -hmm. all of them mix R&B, rap, jazz, every, mm -hmm. all of them. And uh, yeah, it's come from that, my childhood. I used to, when I was a kid, I wanted to be one of this. I became a professional football player, thanks God. But I wouldn't mind if I was a singer or dancer, really. I'm mm. not saying that I know to sing well or dance well, but <laughs> let's say uh, it's okay. You do that quite a lot. I <laughs> do that quite that a lot, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, did, so. did, you, did you manage to, well, of course, there's this whole uh, COVID situation, etc. Did you did you f already find anywhere in Vilnius where you can dance or do uh, something like that? Well, to be honest, uh, tell myself I will dance, I will have time to dance and all this uh, after we'll win something or enjoy them. Okay. Had, uh, and particularly when we started, we wasn't winning or nothing. I was everything, but even at home wasn't putting a lot of music, you know, I was just so, mm -hmm. so, so focused. And But now, start winning, I put some music, you know, relax a little bit. But for now, we have these very, very important games coming. And uh, it's true that I tell myself, I have, a, I say I'm very, how can I say, uh, very joy person, like to laugh, dance, all this, but I'm also very serious, you know, in my work. So now knowing mm -hmm. that we have this in three weeks, a big competition coming, like I tell my teammates, even I'm speaking to them, like, Let's be just focused, you know, on this. Mm -hmm. We'll have time after. I, better to enjoy, you know, when you have won something that's before. Because if you enjoy it too fast and then you lose, <laughs> you will look like... Uh, yeah, like you, you weren't very serious. You weren't very serious. This is the, this is the thing. Yeah. So, uh, I, also, I've, I've been following you on Instagram, I mm -hmm. think, since, since you arrived. And I've, <clears throat> I've seen that you have kind of a relationship with this uh, singer ex-football player Makasi. Makasi, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What, what, when does this, this friendship uh, come to be? Or did you play somewhere together or so? Because no. I've, I've read he's kind of a, kind of well-known in, in France. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a famous, famous fan uh -huh. singer. Of how, I don't know, maybe one of his songs, maybe 60 million of mm -hmm. view in YouTube. Very, very famous. Well, I'm a French guy playing football and he made one um, how can I say, duo with one of my friends who is, was in X Factor in Latvia, Kevin Lenny. Okay, that's a very so, interesting yeah, crossover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, was, uh, I was in Latvia with him and Kevin told me, hey, you know Makasi? I said, yeah, yeah, I know him well. And he introduced us, you know, so from Instagram, we started following each other and speaking because he's Congolese also. Ah, okay, Congolese, so that's another so We are speaking in Congolese, well. yeah, every time there is a post, uh, even from Jalgiris <laughs> or in training, sometimes, you know, when I do some tricks in training, I would see, I think two days ago, three, and he sent me, oh, bro, you kill him, you know, <laughs> in our language, we make some jokes about this, or for his birthday was uh, three days ago, his yeah, birthday, yeah. I wished him on, uh, on Instagram, yeah, yeah, I think I have a great potential and really wish him uh, all the best and him as well for me and in football. I think now he didn't know nothing about uh, uh, Jalgiris or Echenem, but uh, he will come. He said he will come uh, one day here. So I and wish. You, you could, then you can sing together or yeah, dance no. together. <laughs> he will sing, he will sing. I will play football, he will sing. <laughs> yeah, you have your own uh, yeah, my jobs. Own, <laughs> my own jobs, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, because uh, the, the Euro 2020 is approaching or yeah. when this will be released, it will be uh, started. So. Uh, what do you, w will you be watching that? Uh, what will you be supporting? What do you think of the tournament, etc.? So, Of course, I will be supporting France, mm -hmm. uh, Euro. Uh, to be honest, uh, I don't know. There are some players, you know, like me. Maybe I'm alone. I don't like watching football so much. Okay. Really, I, you, you enjoy when I, I enjoy playing? more playing, or if really, let's say, my team is playing, or I don't know, even under 19, I would prefer to go see a game in real. Mm -hmm. Then to watch, uh, let's say, not of course, big match, Real, Barca, or 
but other games if it's not our game i've watched more our game my our game like uh, to um, uh, how can i say watch our game to analyze our mm -hmm. game than other games in big games you know really it's not really my thing i don't really like to watch games okay watch important events but other times i spend them reading uh, language I like I like to speak a lot of language you know mm -hmm. going Google trying Spanish Russian I do these things Netflix but football no not so much any any Lithuanian <laughs> Lithuanian movie uh, yeah have you uh, tried learning or because I've seen that <laughs> I like language but it's true that I was like come on Lithuania you know like no I didn't <laughs> just know <laughs> no, just <laughs> just no uh, to be honest the thing that's helping me uh, my ex-girlfriends uh, was that I uh, have very big secrets that I will tell you and how I learned all this language quickly is because in every let's say country I had a girlfriend and she was speaking this language and it was okay people was how you learn so far but she was every time in me you know speaking speaking I was telling her let's speak the language let's speak Russian example I was with one Russian girl in um, Latvia mm -hmm. and all the time all the time even when it's bad words when I would do something bad she want to shout on me she was shouting me in, uh, in, Russian? in Russian and so, so I was, I get used to pretty fast. That's how I was doing Spanish as well, French as well. So basically what you need to learn Lithuanian is a Lithuanian girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that, yeah, it's very difficult in this moment. I don't know where they're hiding, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any of them. <laughs> well, maybe when the, the, the pandemic is over, yeah, uh, yeah, that, yeah. that would be better. Maybe, maybe. but to be honest, it's true that I don't hang out uh, Still, I'm here. I didn't even went out because everything was closed. All this maybe that also doesn't help, but it's okay. As much as we keep winning on the field and doing better, I feel good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thanks You're a lot. Welcome. It was a very interesting interview. Thank actually. you. Thank you. Thanks thank to you. you for inviting me. Cheers. Cheers.